So in the home gym, for most of us, it's really important to invest in equipment that provides a lot of versatility without taking up too much space. Specialty bars are a great way to accomplish that. They have several benefits, including, among other things, injury prevention, rehab, mobility limitations, training specificity, and just some good old fashioned fun. In this video, we'll be taking a look at what I consider to be the top five specialty bars for most home gym owners. More on that coming up. Hey friends, I'm glad you're here because today is yet another perfect day to talk about gym equipment. Hey guys, my name is Adam with Garage Gym Lab. And if you're new here, this channel is all about testing and reviewing gym equipment, building the home gym community and providing inspiration to anybody out there who's looking to build their dream gym. So if that's something you're into, I definitely encourage you to subscribe. That way you can stay up to date with all the weekly content. All right, so if you guys have been hanging out with me on here or on social media, then it should be no surprise that I love specialty bars. As a former Olympic barbell purist, and don't get me wrong, I still love and use traditional straight bars, I've been incorporating specialty bars more heavily in my personal training over the last couple of years. I think they're great to use on accessory lifts, and in some cases, and for some people, they can fully replace a straight bar with great effect. The five bars that I'm discussing here are what I consider to be the best specialty bars for most people. And it's where I recommend that most people start when beginning their specialty bar collection. That doesn't mean that they're the best specialty bars for everyone. However, there are specialty bars out there that may be more suitable for you depending on your training style. For example, if you train with a lot of specificity towards strongman or powerlifting, then things like logs, deadlift bars, squat bars, et cetera, are all excellent options. Consider your goals, and if you have specific questions, definitely let me know. I'd love to help however I can. You can also check out the Garage Gym Lab Specialty Bar Finder, which is a great and fun way to narrow down the list of options out there based on your needs and your requirements. I am curious though, what are your favorite specialty bars out there? Drop a comment below and let the community know. But with that, let's get into my top five. The first specialty bar that I recommend is the Safety Squat Bar. This is the first specialty bar that I ever purchased from my home gym, and it's the one that I used the most before starting my home gym. The Safety Squat Bar is great for a few reasons. The first is that it eliminates upper body discomfort, especially in the shoulders, elbows, and wrists. Unlike a traditional straight bar where you have to externally rotate to get into position, something that a lot of people have an issue with, the safety squat bar puts your hands out in front of you in a neutral and very comfortable position. The second benefit is that it's a great upper back and quad builder. A traditional safety squat bar has a cambered angle on the sleeve that works to pitch you forward. So to prevent that, your upper back has to fight and because the bar produces a more upright spine angle, you get great quad activation. This more vertical spine angle also may be helpful for those who have had low back discomfort, especially on low bar squats. The third benefit of safety squat bars is that they're extremely versatile. In addition to squat variations, you can perform things like lunges, good mornings, step ups, calf raises, and in some cases, JM presses and more. I'm personally a very heavy safety squat bar user. My favorite traditional safety squat bar is the Elite FTS SS Yoke Bar. I've owned this bar since 2016. It's absolutely terrific. The Titan Safety Squat Bar is another very popular option. It's closely aligned with the Elite FTS Bar, and you can watch my in-depth comparison video between those two right there. And then you have other options, including the Kabuki Transformer Bar, the Bells of Steel SS3, and a few more. You also have the Mars Bar, which isn't really a safety squat bar and which really doesn't fit into any specific category, but which is without a doubt my personal favorite specialty bar of all time. The safety squat bar in general is great for a wide population of strength athletes. And again, it's one that I really recommend. The second specialty bar that I recommend is the Trap Bar, also known as the Hex Bar. This bar has been around for decades, it's not new, but it's become increasingly popular over the last couple of years, namely with the explosion of the open-ended Trap Bar, like this one from Kabuki. A Trap Bar accomplishes a few things that many users will find beneficial. Unlike deadlifting with a straight bar where the weight is out in front of your body, a trap bar is tied more closely to your center of gravity, and as such, it can greatly alleviate a lot of the low back discomfort that some lifters experience. It also tends to create a more vertical spine angle, which makes the trap bar a solid quad builder since you're basically standing straight up. 
That said, it can be biased more towards the posterior with a harder hip hinge. Speaking of a hip hinge, the trap bar is a great tool for teaching, learning, and ingraining a proper hip hinge. That's exactly how I learned, and it does so very naturally due to the handle placement. These handles are another big benefit of the trap bar, specifically their neutral orientation, which creates a very comfortable position and helps alleviate some of that shoulder discomfort that some lifters can experience. This also opens up some additional training variety because you can more easily do things like farmer's carries and others. Trap bars will most commonly come with single handles or with dual handles. I recommend dual handles for most because it allows you to more easily train different ranges of motion, whether that's for injury reasons or maybe for specific reasons like training through a sticking point. An open-ended trap bar is gonna provide you more training variety than a closed trap bar, specifically on things like lunges, step-ups, etc. But they're also quite a bit more expensive. Some of the ones that you can look out for include the Kabuki Trap Bar HD, which is what you see here, the Intec Mod F Bar, the Aleco Open Deadlift Bar, the Prime Fitness Trap Bar, and a few others. If you're going the closed route, then I would recommend looking at something like the Rogue TB2, but you can also check out some fairly budget-friendly options that get the job done really well, including the Synergy Trap Bar, the Cap Mega Hex Bar, and a few others. If you're a competitive power lifter, I'd probably swap the deadlift bar in place of the trap bar, but otherwise the trap bar is a great tool for a lot of lifters given its versatility and its other benefits. The third specialty bar that I recommend is the multi-grip bar, also known as the football bar or the Swiss bar, depending on the handle angles. This is another very versatile bar that also has benefits for those who have upper extremity issues, pain, discomfort, especially again in the shoulders, elbows, and wrists. Because of the handle, you're able to maintain a more neutral position, which a lot of people find to be more comfortable. This bar can also help with building strength in the triceps due to arm position and grip width, which can have a carryover to your straight bar bench press. These bars often come in different shapes and sizes, and while the names are somewhat interchangeable, a football bar is often associated with angled grips, whereas a Swiss bar is normally associated with perfectly neutral grips, and a multi-grip bar may or will include a combination of the two. They can also have a camber for additional range of motion. Oftentimes you'll see this in the center of the bar, but you can now find it on a full arc, like on the Kabuki Cadillac bar, which is more or less a hybrid, multi-grip, and buffalo bar. This can be especially useful on things like rows, but either way, multi-grip bars can be used for various pressing movements, pulling movements, curl variations, and more. I've been using the Edge Fitness Slim football bar since 2016, and one of the things I really like about that bar is it has a narrower frame for even more range of motion. But you can buy multi-grip bars from the likes of Rogue, Titan, Elite FTS, and many more. I also own the Kabuki Cadillac bar. I've had it for the last couple of years, but I've only recently started using it because one of the things about this bar is it doesn't really fit very well in a 47 inch rack, which can actually lead to some J-cup damage. Now I have the Oak Club Alpha S cups, which allow me to use this bar without issue, and I'm really enjoying it. I'll have more on these cups soon, and I'll put down some recommendations for some other multi-grip bars down below. Moving right along, the fourth specialty bar that I recommend is the Buffalo Bar, also known as the Bow Bar or the Duffalo Bar, in the same sense that Kleenex is synonymous with the greater tissue market. Personally, the Buffalo Bar played a major role for me during a time where I was struggling with some wrist pain on bench. I have pretty small wrists, and between squatting and benching competition style for an extended period of time, my wrists were feeling really banged up. And likewise, my shoulders weren't feeling great either. The Buffalo Bar creates a slightly different wrist angle that I found to be really beneficial in preventing some of that wrist pain, especially on bench press. I also saw a reduction in my shoulder discomfort, which is a bit counterintuitive considering you get more range of motion with this bar. Now, there is a bit of controversy around that aspect of the bar, that is the relationship between more range of motion and a reduction in shoulder pain. However, from my own personal experience, I saw a reduction in both my wrist and my shoulder discomfort using the Buffalo Bar. The Buffalo Bar is also great for squats, which is how most people are likely to use it. The arc in the bar sort of wraps around your scaps and it puts the shoulders and the elbows lower than they otherwise would be on a straight bar. Coupled with more scapular retraction, this can help alleviate some upper extremity pain and discomfort. The overall weight distribution on the Buffalo Bar is also very similar to a straight bar, so carryover to your competition lifts is going to be very high. 
So if you're somebody who has pain or discomfort in your shoulders, in your elbows, or in your wrist, and you wanna train as close to a competition straight bar as possible, then I would definitely recommend looking into a buffalo bar. The Kabuki Strength Duffalo Bar is without a question the gold standard, but it is quite expensive. What you see here is the Vulcan Buffalo Bar. I've had it for several years, and it's been a great addition to my gym. Another thing to consider as it relates to a Buffalo Bar is that if you have traditional J cups, it's gonna to wanna to spin or roll on you, which is ultimately going to chew through your UHMW. I had electrical tape on this bar for the longest time to try to prevent that, but eventually got the Go Strong J Cups 2.0 with the Duffalo Box, which is absolutely a game changer. You can check out my video review right there. And last but certainly not least, we gotta have something for that flex, and that's a curl bar. If you wanna attack those biceps at multiple angles and with variable load, then a curl bar is an awesome addition. Now, a curl bar will either be rackable or it won't be. A rackable curl bar is more expensive, but it's also easier to load and it opens up a little bit more training variety while also making some movements easier to perform like skull crushers. One of the most important things to consider with a curl bar are the bends. These bars come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and angles. You can go really steep or you can go relatively flat depending on your goals and preferences. But in any case, curl bars will often allow for two hand positions, a narrow position and a wide position. I own the Rackable Rep Curl Bar, which I find to be very comfortable and effective. Mine is in stainless steel, but they also offer a hard chrome version, which is actually what I would recommend for most people. From a feel perspective, shaft finish plays less of a role on a bar like this than it would on a straight bar, which I would absolutely recommend stainless over chrome. And Rep also offers a non-rackable version of this bar as well. The Road Curl Bar is another great option. It's one that you can sometimes find in the boneyard for a great price. A curl bar is in general one that I don't think you need to go really crazy on in terms of cost. You can find effective curl bars for really pretty cheap on Amazon, etc. But if you are looking for something a little bit higher quality, then this one from Rep or the Road Curl Bar are both very solid options. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I love specialty bars and I think they fill a huge role in training, whether it's as accessory pieces or as full-blown straight bar replacements. I'm curious, what are your favorite specialty bars and do you agree with my top five list? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, be well and we'll chat soon.